Hey everyone, Rarity Dash here, and it's time for another reaction request. If you have a video that you'd like me to react to, check the description below. There's a link that will take you to a Google document with all the relevant information. So today we're looking at yet more angry video game nerd. And uh, this one's interesting because we're not looking at either a game or a console for this. Instead, the topic for this video is video game magazines. And... Uh, yeah, it's kind of interesting to think in this modern age where everything's all on the internet, but uh, video game magazines were a big deal growing up for me and for like anyone in that era because uh, <laughs> the internet wasn't what it was now. And uh, yeah, for all the video game information and news, you had to keep up with the magazines and... Uh, I definitely read a lot of Nintendo Power growing up, and uh, there was another one that I got sometimes that had like PlayStation games in it. I forget what that was called exactly. It'll probably come up in the video though. Um, but uh, yeah, video game magazines, they were huge, as were uh, the strategy guides that you could buy uh, for like a specific game if you needed. Uh, like help with that because I mean it wasn't all just easily accessible on the internet like it is now so definitely a different world and um, yeah, I'm definitely very eager to hear the nerd kind of go into this topic and uh, just sort of lay it all out there because it is definitely something I remember and uh, yeah definitely um, prime for some nostalgia with this so let's go ahead and get it started. There we go. Um, speaking of nostalgia, hitting me right out the gate with the Super Metroid music. Yes! <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you for that, James. Oh. Apologies for that. For some reason, my internet disconnected. But, uh... kid in the 80s and especially the 90s it was all about mm -hmm. running out to the mailbox to find that new issue of that video game magazine because there was tons of them they were filled with awesome stuff previews for upcoming games new consoles walkthroughs codes and reviews in the past i talked about nintendo power so oh. it's about time i talk about so we're not going to be talking about nintendo Somewhere power that's the one that was the main one for me like but... atari age but others were more generic like game, pro, game pro i think that's kind of gaming monthly and even in the millennium, we had retro kind of gravitated towards like game video game collector. <laughs> look at that guy, what a nerd! In today's age, you can look up anything about games you want on the yeah. internet: walkthroughs, cheats, mm -hmm. reviews, previews, whatever. Back in the day, if you wanted to know if a game sucked or how to find a secret or get an infinite lives code, you had to wait for one of these to come out monthly. Well, let's start with the oldest magazine I have: Atari Age. Wow. They came free with the wasn't to the Atari Club. They were pretty wasn't sure aware there were any dedicated Atari magazines. Each, and they were all printed in Center City, Philadelphia. They didn't give much insight on if the game sucked. They were mainly filled with fluff pieces about new yeah. games to buy and some articles. Mainly and advertising. Again, this was Atari's official magazine, so uh -huh. I mean, Nintendo Power did the same thing. Remember it said Back to the Future had that distinct LJN style? The first issue of Atari Age has an awful interview. I suppose that is none fair. other than Pac-Man, filled oh, with awful Pac puns. Pac-Man says, "I had what you'd call a well-rounded education. <laughs> <laughs> I was involved in high school dramatics. I played that's the in Central High's production of Man a la Muncher." Oh God! Uh -huh. We're open. All about. <laughs> I did more acting in college, mostly theater in the round productions. Oh, uh -huh. come on. 
Oh, I love this issue right here. E.T. on the cover. Oh, no. Just had a sign that says the end is near. Atari Age also had some cool do-it-yourself type articles teaching you how to fix joysticks. And even had okay, a that's cool. And handed joystick. Overall, a fun magazine to pass the time or read on the shitter. Later, with the rise of Nintendo and Sega, more magazines began popping up. They expanded their coverage and became more in-depth. So here we have Game Players Magazine, Video Games and Computer Entertainment, well that's a good one, Game Pro, and Electronic Gaming Monthly. Game Players started out as Game Players Strategy Guide to Nintendo Games. It's basically a knockoff of Nintendo Power, but it's unofficial and has nowhere near the quality. Just look at these screenshots. Hmm. I understand yeah. capturing game footage back then wasn't as easy as it is now, but look at this shit. Looks like they took you know, the they picture with a Polaroid, then photocopied it 50 times. Probably exactly what they did. Those are usually just the box art from whatever game they're covering. Sometimes they're all over the place. Look at this. They basically took whatever video game stereotypes they could and slapped them on the front. W what game does this represent? Okay, this guy, he looks like Rad Spencer from Bionic Commando, mixed with Matthew McConaughey. Why is there a kid doing a hand plan on his shoulder? Skater kid looks just as confused as I do. <laughs> okay, this might be the worst cover I've ever seen. Oh, God. Super Mario 3. Apparently, I can't even tell <laughs> what I'm Why? What why? why from Mario? Why, why is it... Easter egg or something. Holy shit. I mean, they, they, they didn't even try. You have what looks like Wario in the it's corner. Like they tried to make it bad. All over the print. The only thing that could possibly indicate that this is a Mario cover are the words. Imagine if you couldn't read. You wouldn't have any idea what this was supposed to be. You, you wouldn't even know what it is. I mean, you'd just be sitting there trying to figure out what this puked out pastel piss picture is. One thing that really twists my asshole is the sheer number of ads. The same 1-900 number shows up oh. three times in the same issue. Oh, Look at this face. that means they couldn't yeah. even find yeah. enough yeah. advertisers to kid. fill the damn Your dad's thing. gonna flip shit when he sees a $500 fucking phone bill! I swear, every other page is an ad. Look, ad. 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 I'm guessing this magazine did not last very long. Look at this. A picture of burnt toast that's so big it takes up more than a page. I don't get it. I don't get it. The sad thing is I've reviewed most of the games advertised. There's ads for Hydlide, Super Hydlide, Street Fighter 2010, Silver Surfer, Tiger Electronic Simon's Quest, Tiger Electronic Ninja Gaiden, Kid Cool, The Power Glove, and even Bugs Bunny's Crazy Castle. The most okay. frequent ads I've seen to come across are shitty joysticks. There's tons of them. Shitty joysticks, shitty joysticks, shitty joysticks everywhere. I don't get it. Was there something wrong with the controllers that came with the system? Oh, looky here, the U-Force. Are joysticks a thing of the past? I hope not, seeing as most of these ads are for joysticks. <laughs> They're trying to put themselves out of business? Not to mention, they all suck ass through a crazy straw. I like to call these shitty friend controllers because they were the controllers your shitty friend would make you use. Another thing I love are the ads for the most stupid, useless shit. Like, look at this. Gaming gloves. They're basically fingerless gloves, except with a thumb. Could you imagine being that guy, showing up to your friend's house with these stupid neon Batman gloves? Was holding a Nintendo controller really so bad that, oh, uh, he needed protective equipment? Oh, but it gets worse. Here you go. The Thumb Master. It's basically <laughs> a bright purple uh, cushioned condom for your thumb. But it eliminates video I... thumb. Have you ever in your life suffered from video thumb? Well, maybe Silver Surfer, or one of those games where you need a turbo controller, and when you do, your thumb will thank you. Thank you. Now, these guys know how to make an ad right here. It's a dude getting his nuts kicked in. Why? Why did they do this? This is a real ad. It's kicking him in the balls. This one says, we took some of the worst garbage on TV and turned it into a... <laughs> <laughs> That's a... <laughs> and turn it into a great video game. Yeah, I, I here's an ad for a Game Boy. Interesting Light. way to promote a game. Weirds me out is the kid in the back of the car, no seatbelt or anything. What's even crazier is in later magazines they replace this ad with real life people. They put this kid's life in danger just to sell a shitty Game Boy Light. Oh, 
Look at that. An ad for the line of Game Boy shit from STD. Yeah, <laughs> of that's course. how the word handy is in quotes. Yeah, they just knew they were jerking off. Speaking of STDs and being handy, there are tons of really adult ads out there, too. Just look at some of these. Oh. Kick some balls, monster bone, pray for a full frontal assault, size does matter, and of course, the Sega dick. PSM even did a swimsuit special. What were they thinking? The articles range from interesting and useful to downright idiotic. One of the best features was the walkthroughs. Like right here, they yeah. hand drew all the levels from Super Mario Land on Game Boy. That's pretty cool. And here's a walkthrough of Robocop 2 on NES. Man, I wish I had found this when I reviewed it last year. That game made me want to get my dick shot off by Robocop. Here's a letter from a kid who has a sister named Dalsum. He actually sent in her birth certificate to prove it. Hopefully it was a copy. Here, they talk about the Home Alone games and even promote the upcoming movie sequel and the Home Alone phenomenon. Yeah, such a phenomenon. You know that, that guy right there? He turned out to be a pizza boy. The reviews are always a major part of these magazines. They gave kids the insight on which games were worth their money and which ones they should avoid, like the fucking plague. But sometimes these recommendations are really off the mark. Like right here, Contra 3, a game revered as a classic, one of the best side-scrolling shooters on the Super Nintendo, and they gave it sevens. Then look at this shit, Terminator 2 on the NES, a game that's total shit, and it's got eight, a nine, a seven, and another eight. Are you kidding me? Terminator 2 on NES has better scores than Contra 3? Yeah, I mean, that, that's like saying I, I, I tasted a shit-flavored ice cream, and I gave it uh, a 10 out of 10. It was good, trust me. That's not the only shit thought highly of. Here's Double Dragon 3. Its fun factor has a perfect score. No way. No way. They included the Bimmy and Jimmy screenshot. <laughs> well, at least the caption has the Bimmy? name. Believe it or not, there existed a magazine for the Amiga CD. 32. Really? The crazy thing is that the magazine kept coming out long after they stopped making the system. And look oh. at this. They gave Gloom a 92 out of 100? Thankfully, my CD32 is safely burning in hell where it belongs. Man, the memories. It's fun to read these knowing how the technology evolved. They covered the breakthrough of laser discs, virtual reality, and all the new types of controllers. Here's this shitty Sega Activator. Damn, this guy could give Keith Apicary a run for his money. A lot of these magazines came with technology, some being bundled with diskettes and demo CDs. For the April issues, GamePro would have a parody section, Lame Pro. This was fun to read. I love Bubonic the Blowfrog and his pal Snails. Yeah, it was stupid, but back then, it was just cool to see people in the gaming industry making Sweet fun fighter. of games. <laughs> Here's a piece about the ultimate gamer. This guy's no joke. He makes my Nintendo suit look like a cheap Halloween costume. Here's the top four hot video game babes. And for the ladies, the top four hot video game hunks. The artwork was always great. Well, <laughs> questionable always, list sometimes. there. Oh, and in this picture, this kid's holding a ninja star and whipping out a yo-yo right as he's about to be brutally murdered by a skeleton. Oh, and then check out this picture of Godzilla and kinda King Kong. And they're both really shiny for some reason. This picture, I don't know what is um. going on. It's just hideous. When it came to Dragon <laughs> Link, for some reason they always had a problem. Here he is on the cover of Nintendo oh, Strategies. At least I think it's him. Oh, and this Link looks more like a villain than a hero. He's pretty scary. Yeah, that's Zelda's a fairly evil-looking Link. With Aghanim. She doesn't even look like she wants to be saved. Yeah, she's probably horrified by Link's demon spawn face. <laughs> yeah. This one's not so bad, but Link looks really pissed. And mm -hmm. this one here, it's oh, like God. Tim Allen playing Link. <laughs> it's, yeah, it does. <laughs> There's some fan art. Some of it is really amazing. It's exactly what some it looks like. It, as you can see... Um, it's shit. And I know that's not nice because that's probably a some young kid who drew it. But the kid's grown up now, so he can handle it. It's shit. I, I, I guess. Just flipping through these magazines is like opening up a time capsule. You just can't go wrong. So, let's end with a top five. It's the nerds' top five most 90s moments in gaming magazines. Number five, Crime Wave. Look at this scene. I mean, look at this. 
Okay, you have this guy screaming, and then you have this guy with these cool shades, and then this girl who looks like she's falling asleep or something. Is this Dan from Street Fighter Alpha? There's this guy with a backwards hat wearing pajamas carrying a fucking gun, and then on the ground, there's all this money and guns and bullets and cocaine. Yeah, in the text, oh. they're talking about drugs. It's cocaine. <laughs> okay. It's <a> magazine. <laughs> Number four. This gang right here. You got this badass biker granny, this bow tie wearing nerd, this cool gamer kid, this punk ass mohawk motherfucker, and then this valley girl sitcom star, and then a bulldog with the same sunglasses as the kid, and it's all for a Pictionary game. Yeah, Pictionary. Um. Number three. An ad for Socks the Cat Rocks the Hill. You got Bill Clinton jamming on the sacks and Socks the Cat coming out with this real badass looking grin. What the hell? And this is for a real game? Now that's 90s as fuck. <laughs> Number two. Wow. Wow. Look at this kid. He's saying, ass. I mean, look at this. He's just cruising through the galaxy, surfing through space with those badass sunglasses and knee pads and that Tiger Electronic game of Narc. Oh. Yeah. Motherfucking 90s. And at last, number one. Oh, all about These the Tiger Electronic games. Goddamn mullets. Business in the front, party in the back. The iconic haircut of the decade. You want to look like a bad motherfucker that plays real hard, guzzles Jolt Cola, and watches nothing but MTV? You gotta roll 1090, my dude. That's 10% up front, 90 round back. Look at this Joe Cool some bitch. That's a guy who knows all the tips and tricks. Yeah, motherfuck. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ah. Well, that was fun. Big, uh, big dose of nostalgia. Um, although, I mean, definitely a, a lot of, a lot more video game magazines than I was aware of. Like, I, I don't think I generally veered too far from just Nintendo Power. Like, that was the thing. That was the one. At least until after the Super Nintendo era. Like, I think by then... Because by then, I, I mean, I had both an N64 and a PlayStation. But uh, the PlayStation was far and away my favorite of the two. And uh, I became more of a PlayStation fan going forward. I mean, I still bought the Nintendo consoles. And uh, I feel like... Um, Especially on the GameCube, there was a lot that I liked, but uh, um, yeah, PlayStation was definitely more <laughs> where more of my attention went, uh, and that's a, the time when I would go and explore other options for like magazines like GamePro and get those on occasion. Um, but uh, even then, that was like an occasional thing where I would pick one, pick one up eventually. Right, ask my mom for one <laughs> at the right opportunity. But I think, I mean, with the Nintendo Power, I think we had a s subscription for it for a while, so we got like all the issues. So uh, definitely, definitely a different story there. But um, yeah, yeah, it's still cool. Still cool to just kind of see him go through all this. Um, because, I mean, it's a different different world, the, the, the era of these magazines. And uh, definitely definitely takes you back. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the reaction. Let me know if you did. And see you in the next